Hey everyone, it's Vinny. In today's lecture, um, I'm going to be talking about acid perms or the acid wave. And I'm actually going to limp in uh, low pH waves with this because they're kind of, they're, they're not the same, um, but they're pretty much similar in the result that they produce and their usage. So um, starting off, we've talked a lot about um, perms that are on the far uh, right side of our pH scale, which is very alkaline. And on the far left side is very acidic. And basically with pH, um, you don't want to go too far uh, alkaline to the right or too far to the left, which is acidic. Because if you go too acidic, your hair is going to actually melt and you're going to damage it. If you go too alkaline, it's going to actually dissolve your hair. So either one is a bad choice. And if you actually go neutral, which I, I remember having a, a conversation, it was funny, um, with another hairdresser and they thought that the hair's pH was neutral. You want your hair to be a pH of 7. No, you don't. Um, not a good idea um, because a pH of 7, even though it is neutral and that's good for water, hair is different. Natural hair actually is around a pH of 4.5 to 5.5. A bit of a debate about that. It's kind of like um, in between it for some because not everyone has the same hair type. Not everyone has the same amount of oiliness. Our hair's uh, oil, sebum, is acidic and that protects you from pathogens and microbes and it protects the scalp and it conditions the hair. So when we're talking about chemical services that could potentially make your hair too alkaline, it's going to swell your hair and soften it and make it very um, brittle, whereas something that's acidic will actually harden your hair. Now with perming, it's a little bit different. It gets a little complicated because the way most cosmetology textbooks, even though there's technically only one textbook that cosmetology uses, um, shows in their book uh, the chart, which is the continuum of perms, it makes it uh, very um, simple, which I like in some ways. But on the other hand, when I go into the um, professional store, whether it be um, a beauty supplier, um, like a chain or a locally owned one, the wall of perms to choose from is astronomical. There is 10 tons of like perms to choose from. Um, I almost said tens of thousands, that's too many, uh, but if at least a good 20, 30 options. And with perming, it can get overwhelming because not every manufacturer has the same formula or uses the same uh, pH, so you really want to pay attention to that. Now, what I have done um, is according to the cosmetology book, they recommend uh, using the uh, MSDS. I've tried to use that and it gets complicated. So be mindful of that. You're not always going to get a straight answer. So I always just call the manufacturer and I'll ask them or I'll go online and I'll ask a, a professional group of stylists to uh, comment on what the pH of the product is if they know because some people on the websites are uh, professionals as well. So they can, or educators I mean, so they could give you uh, an idea. Now, on the pH continuum, your acid waves are going to be a pH of 4.5 to 7.0, so pH of very acidic, which is the same as our hair type, or a pH of neutral, or they're going to be a low pH waves, which is a different category of perms. Your low pH waves are going to be a little bit higher at a pH of 6.5 to 7.0. Now, I'm going to be real with you guys. Uh, low pH waves, uh, you hardly ever see them. I never see them when I go into the professional store or have found ingredients that match up with it because they use a different chemistry than the, uh, the acidic perms. Acidic perms and low pH waves, they have one thing in common, and that is that they are both endothermic in the sense that they uh, absorb heat from the outside surroundings. Um, so that will usually be like a professional dryer or like one of those fun uh, hooded dryers that people will sit under. I always think they look like a spaceship, um, at least when I was a kid. So if you guys remember like in the 80s and 90s, um, if you guys were uh, remember back then or were kids back then or what have you, if you went in a salon back then, you would see someone getting a perm underneath the dryer like that. And that was most likely an acid wave, a true acid wave or a low pH wave. Um, because back then when perms were huge, um, and the chemistry was there, people uh, were looking for options that were less damaging because you got to remember they had highlighted hair. And if you have highlighted hair, you really don't want to perm your hair with an alkaline solution because those highlights are going to frizz, fry, and break right off. Um, or in one case, I remember having um, one of my really good uh, friends, uh, she has been in the industry for years, 
back in, I wanna say the 70s or early 80s, uh, she had a woman that had bleached her hair, then she had colored it and she told her, oh no, I didn't color my hair. Well, she put the rods in her hair and as that solution was working, the rods were falling off with the hair attached to it. And luckily she was able to rebond it with uh, using um, Redken Extreme, so it rebonded some of the hair together. That's one thing to always uh, be careful of because if you don't use the right chemistry, you can have a, a scary situation like that. Now, our acid waves, our, our true acid waves, I should say, they are going to have three components. You're going to have your neutralizer, you're going to have your waving lotion, and you're going to have your activator. Sometimes it's called a reforming lotion or a thermalizer. Uh, because some acid waves nowadays, even though they're acid and pH, they have the same chemistry as one of the perms that uh, heat up or are self-heating. Not all, but some. And instead of using a, uh, ammonium thioglycolic acid, they use GMTG, which is glycerol monothioglycolic. Um, and that's the reducing agent that's going to break your bonds. Um, now, the first true acid waves, they were introduced in the 1970s as, like I said, an alternative to using more as an alternative to using the harsher, more alkaline perms, because back then it was really one option of perming, and then in the 1970s you now had an explosion of perms, so you have the acid wave, and they started coming out with other chemistry uh, innovations to make perms less damaging. So not, some acid waves, most of the, a true acid wave, if you're working with a true acid wave, it's going to require heat to process, and that's because if you have your hair's pH, which is 4.5, that perm is not going to fully penetrate and break through. You're going to need the added heat to help open up your hair's cuticle to allow that perm in there to break the bonds. And it's going to take a while. It's not going to be quick like a lot of other perms, like the cold wave that processes within 10 to 25 minutes. Uh, acid, a true acid wave can take about 20-something minutes. I know the Paul Mitchell's ones take a while because some acid waves are actually ammonia and thio-free, so they use a different chemistry and they are even more so less damaging in my opinion because they don't swell up the cuticle like other perms do. Now, I wanna talk about our uh, low pH waves uh, because our low pH waves are something that I honestly never see and it's really not something you'll see uh, in the professional uh, sense unless they make a comeback. Your low pH waves are gonna be your perms that use sulfites, sulfates, sulfites, and bisulfates. And what those are is those are stinky salts is what I call them um, because sulfates are what strip your hair um, if they're in your shampoo. And they work at a low pH. Um, they've been used in perms for years, so they really haven't been popular. And that's kind of what the book says, and it's true. You really don't find them anywhere other than maybe Sally's and the unprofessional perms they sell to anyone. Um, they're marketed as body waves or alternative waves. They don't, they're really weak perms. They're not strong and they don't provide um, a strong curl. They're more for those fun body waves. So I guess if you wanted hair like mine, um, like I have naturally wavy hair, that would be a similar result that one of those perms would produce. Um, similar to your true acid waves, I kind of lump them together because, like I said, you don't see them. Uh, but your acid perms um, do have a continuum. I haven't found an acid wave that is professional and it has a pH of 4.5. If you guys know if there's any professional perms, um, and this is a question I wanna know, that are either a low pH wave that are professional or a true acid wave with a pH of 4.5, comment down below and let me know because I wanna actually work with some of them. I have a whole bunch of perms here that I brought um, to show you guys um, to do a little uh, talk about how to apply this when you are choosing a perm. So, one of your perms that you'll find, um, they do have acid perms. Uh, K-Pak Waves has a whole series from Joyco of what they call da damage-free, um, thio-free, and ammonia-free perms that you could use on bleach-tinted and highlighted, highlighted hair. Um, they have an acid one which has an activator and it's, I believe, also thio-free. Another thing I want to bring to your attention is that some perms can be marketed as an acid wave. No one really uses true acid wave anymore um, with the name. So best example of this is Redken Creative Curl. They have uh, three components. They have your um, waving lotion, your neutralizer, and they have the um, what they call the reforming lotion. But this brand of perm is, even though it is an acid wave on the box, it's actually more of an acid balance or what you would call an exothermic wave because it makes its own heat when you mix it. And it's used for normal and resistant hair. 
The key that you're looking for um, with using a true acid perm is a perm that is safe for up to 50% or more uh, highlighted hair, bleached hair, or high lift hair. That's gonna be your giveaway. You're gonna work with something that's lower on the pH scale. Best example of that is a really good one, um, which is uh, from Tressa Perms. Their um, Pliance Perm, which is the pink box. It's for fragile, delicate, high lift, tinted, and highlighted hair. You could use it on really light hair, and it has your three components as well. So it's also going to have your neutralizer, your uh, waving lotion, and I don't know what they call it. They're, uh, they call it part A, which is your activator. And in my opinion, you'll also find that the acid perms, if you haven't worked with them, they smell really, really bad, um, especially with some of the older versions. They kind of smell like chicken noodle soup gone bad. Um, it, it stinks up the room. And I can't say that all of them heat up because I have had a few perms that I've mixed and they don't heat up. But some of them that mix and get really warm, um, the odor is just far worse. Um, but the Paul Mitchell one is interesting because it's their acid wave is for up to 50% highlighted hair. Um, and their waving lotion it smells really good. And even their activator does not smell one bit. It kind of smells like pine needles. Um, I haven't mixed it, um, so I don't know how it smells when it's fully mixed, but I will leave a comment down below to let you guys know if it really, really stinks bad. <laughs> Another example of an acid perm um, that comes in a whole wide uh, spectrum is the Zotos Acclaim series. Um, this is their acid perm for normal, tinted, or highlighted hair. So even though it is an acid perm, it's a little bit stronger. It's more so towards that 7.0 uh, pH and it has their activator that's more of a liquidy thing. Now, in my opinion too, for those of you that are going into the cosmetology field and you want to go into product development, try telling your brand of perms, if whatever brand you're with, to start doing their activators in a tube because the activators that are in a thing where you have to pour it in there, the opening of the lid is um, not wide enough so sometimes you can spill it and that stinks. So that's just a little thing I wanted to throw in there that you may uh, come into trouble with that if you're working with an acid wave like that. So another uh, really good version of a true acid wave is uh, the Design Freedom. Design Freedom from Zotos Acid. They produce soft to medium uh, curls and waves and it's an acid perm for normal and tinted hair. Now with the benefit of using this perm um, is with both uh, Design Freedom and Pliance is that you actually get the experience of doing the perm the old school way and that's putting that under the dryer. So with pliance, um, you actually always need to use a dryer. You have to put the perm on, put a cap on, put the person under a, a dryer and heat it up for um, about 10 minutes they say and do your test curl. Because assuming you're using an acid wave because the hair is color treated or bleached or lightened, the hair is already going to be in a fragile state. So if your perm is going to take like that because the hair is already opened. That's why if you use a stronger perm, it's not going to go in there and make it work any better, any faster, or any quicker because the cuticle has already been lifted and the bonds are going to be broken more easily. So the benefit of having the dryer um, with this acid perm is you actually get to check and you get to control how fast or how slow your perm is working. Now the design freedom it is. Uh, Self-heating, so it's exothermic, so you will um, be able to put this on on the hair and it gets warm so it will do its job, or you can have the option of putting it on the under a dryer. Now I'm going to be right back because I want to look at their perm chart because I think you can also do something else known as a uh, dry wrap, so I'll be right back. All right, so I got a chance to check out the uh, chart from Design Freedom. Now, all these perms I mentioned, you can look at online if you just type in the perm name and you type in the PDF or the information. And that is a great way, if you are new to the cosmetology field, to learn about so many perms at once. Um, in fact, if uh, any of you guys are educators, what you can do as an assignment is to tell the class to look up a, uh, a perm um, or pick a perm type or a line depending on how big or small the class is. Like you can look at the Tressa and tell about every single perm they have and what makes them special, the types of perms, the timings, what they're used for and do a presentation and that is a great way to do some extra credit or get a, a grade booster. Just an idea that I thought was cool. 
So with the uh, Zotos, um, and I, I forgot to mention before, I called it a dry wrap. It's actually called a lotion wrap. And what that is, is that you actually wrap the hair dry and then you put the waving lotion on the, uh, the rods and that's used for very resistant hair. Um, normally if the hair is damaged, you're not gonna wanna do that because the product may be very caustic and the water kinda acts as a buffer to kinda dilute and make the uh, perm more gentle. So with the Design Freedom, they actually have a whole uh, continuum. They have Acid, Regular, Tinted, and the um, Plus. So with the Design Freedom Acid on their sheet, you could use it for um, normal and tinted hair up to 20 volume. So if you lotion wrap this with normal um, hair, it's gonna perm quickly at 10 minutes is the maximum amount of time they recommend. If you water wrap up to 20 minutes, and you could use it with a dryer. So with their acid hair, um, and with, the, with their acid perm, you could do, um, with this you're gonna wanna do a, uh, what is it, water wrap. Uh, you're not gonna wanna wrap it with uh, dry hair. With the uh, Design Freedom Plus, you can do it with just the lotion if it, the hair is normal and resistant. With the dryer, you're gonna use it tw to, uh, 12 to 15 minutes and do a test curl after 12 minutes, only because by that point, um, the, the product might be a little too strong and it might have permed. I always recommend checking every five minutes just because you're being more proactive. And in case your hair starts to overprocess, you can catch it um, before it becomes a disaster. So, in terms of that, all these perms work very similar. Um, just to recap, because there's a handy dandy perm chart I like to use, with your low pH wave, again, pH is 6.5 to pH is 7, you're going to be using ammonium sulfite or ammonium bisulfite as your active reducing agent. Um, and it's going to process endothermically, so that means you're going to have to use an outside heat source to produce the heat to help break those bonds. It's recommended for normal, fine, or damaged hair. Your result is gonna be a weak curl or a body wave. The advantage is minimal swelling, and the disadvantage is it requires heat from a dryer and it produces weak curls. Not necessarily uh, the best idea if you have an old lady who wants to perm, um, who wants to get a perm that is really firm. Acid wave is not gonna be your option. Now for the true acid wave, they have a pH of 4.5 to 7.0. They're gonna be using glycerol monothioglycolate, GMTG as their active ingredient. They're gonna process endothermic, so again, you're gonna use uh, a dryer. Not all, some may have an ingredient that heats it up so you can actually process at room temperature. The True Acid Wave is recommended for extremely porous or very damaged hair. The result is soft, weak curls. The advantage is that it is the low pH, so it produces minimal swelling because we're working in the acid scale of the pH scale. Disadvantage is it requires heat from a dryer and it won't produce firm, strong curls. Again, you know, an acid perm is not something for those who are on a time crunch. It takes time. Good hair takes time. Um, but even more so with an acid perm because of how long it takes to um, produce the, the curl or the wave. Now these perms are more so if you're looking for the trendy perms like the American Wave or if someone has a balayage or ombre where there's multiple porosities in the hair, you're gonna really wanna use a true acid wave so you can get a nice body wave instead of worrying about, oh my God, is the ombre part gonna fry right off and is she gonna have curly up here but then the bottom is gonna be frizzed and straight uh, because it overprocessed. So that is your acid waves in a wrap. Um, there is a lot to learn about perms and I, I try to give you guys the whole uh, wide range of it because even though the book says one thing, there is more to it than just that. So I hope you guys like this lecture. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Comment down below again um, what kind of acid waves that you guys have worked with and I wanna know if you guys have ever found a professional brand of a, um, a low pH wave because I really don't find them or I haven't actually found any. So comment down below and let me know that. And if you found a uh, acid wave of a pH of 4.5. So this is it for our perm uh, series on the different types of perm. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna be doing in the future regarding um, to other things. I might just go into maybe like the wrapping procedures and I'm do like a demo. So I'll probably do something like that. So let me know, uh, keep in touch because I'm gonna do more on the perm section and then I'm gonna move into hair color. 
So I hope to hear from all you, uh, all you, all of my viewers soon. And have a wonderful Easter, a wonderful St. Patrick's Day if I don't post um, soon. So I'll see you guys soon.